Cool, I think that's kind of our cue. Very cool. Um, type answers. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, why don't we begin? Or is that okay? Yeah, I'm good to go. Cool. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our webinar on ways to optimize your practice's website and spending some of your day with Laura and myself. Uh, my name is Al Goldman. I lead brand and content at Next Health. Um, hosting today's webinar, apparently, clearly. Um, leading today's conversation is Laura Nadler. She is the founder of Working Cat Marketing. Uh, she speaks internationally, including at places like ADA, ACP, Tufts, Boston University, um, on things like branding, marketing, and creating and using video on uh, practices' websites. Um, also, just to be noted here, she's also the author of Lights, Camera, You, a practical guide for creating and using video to market your practice. Laura, we're so happy to have you here. Um, I want to turn it over to you to get the ball rolling and walk through today's content. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Alec. And huge thank you to our friends at Next Health for sponsoring this. I'm thrilled to be here to talk to you guys today about one of the biggest things that we do in our practice marketing, and that's a website. For any of you who were practicing 10, 12, 20 odd years ago, the idea of a website was insanity. Who has that? And as we started to get more and more into the, it's okay to market yourself, it's okay to have that, a lot of practices built a website, threw up some information about themselves, and just sort of set it and forget it. It became the equivalent of our, our digital billboard or our digital shingle. But what we're learning is that we've got to do more with our website than just have it be a digital billboard. There are things that we can do to make our site more engaging, more attractive to Google, so folks are more likely to find us, but also more likely to convert folks who visit it into actual patients who come to our practice. So today, those are the things that we're really going to focus on. And the biggest ones are going to be, and I apologize, everything stopped moving for me there. There we go. <laughs> My apologies, folks. Technology is our friend until it's not. So the things we're going to talk about today are content that actually does convert. What are the sorts of things that folks want to see on your website that make them say, hmm, that seems like a practice I might want to go visit. We're also going to talk about why your site matters beyond it just being a visual calling card. And we're going to talk about the ability for prospective patients to turn into new patients by having constant access to you, by having a way to constantly reach out to the practice, to get information, to schedule appointments, but to be connected to you. So the first thing we want to talk about is what does your site need to have? And both for prospective patients and also for our friends at Google, who are very important in this conversation, we want to make sure that that includes fresh, relevant content. Right now, think about when did you build the site for the practice? Was it within the last three years? And if it was, that's a really safe place to be because the chances are you've got a lot of this content already. You've probably got video. Maybe you've got a big banner, that what we call the hero video at the top of your website, or you've got meet the doc videos or videos about your services. But if it was more than three years ago, or if you're stretching to more than five or six years ago, then it's probably time to look at whether or not your site has the things that are going to bring patients to it. And those relevant things, those fresh pieces of content are things that Google loves and therefore get you served up more frequently in Google search, because the first step of getting somebody to your website is them finding it. You also want to make sure that your website has responsive design. Most of us are probably sitting in front of a desktop right now. That's how we're watching this. But more and more patients and prospective patients and just plain old humans like us are watching things on our phone or on a tablet or some other sort of device. So again, if your site was built more than three or five years ago, it may not have that mobile capability that it needs to in this market. So if you're looking at a site that's more than three or five years out, get together with the folks who built your site, or maybe look for someone else to build your site and determine if you've got the things that people want to have. They want to have a way to interact, a way for patients to reach out to you, even if it's after hours. So again, make sure we've got fresh, relevant content and that you can use it on all devices, on all platforms. 
when we're talking about that content, one of the biggest things is photography. And I'm going to spend a little time on photography because this is really the first impression that a prospective patient is going to get of you. And we've all seen a million types of photos on websites. Frequently, we see the one I call the bad bridal party photo. And you know this picture. Everyone's standing in line, tallest people in the middle, and it trickles down to the tiniest people on the outside. It's a bad wedding party photo. It doesn't express who you are. It doesn't tell me anything about your practice, except these are the humans who work here. But I look at my folks here at Prosperity Park Dentistry. They've got a real vibe here in this practice. You know, everyone dressed in a similar look for the day. They're not wearing the same clothes, but they all look unified. And they all put their name on this chalkboard wall. So you got a little bit of each person's personality. They're all sitting in a way that's a little more comfortable. Yes, it's an organized shot. It's not sort of this messy, we all ran in at the last minute and posed however we wanted to but it feels more engaging. It feels more warm. I feel like I want to know these people a little better because they've told me a little bit about themselves in the photo. So when you look at the photography on your site or any photography that you might be planning to do, I want you to think about what's the first impression I want to make on people. Do I want to look accessible? Maybe you're a prosthodontist. I deal with a practice in Princeton, New Jersey, and maybe you're your images want to say, we're a serious practice. There's a, there's a lot that goes into being a prosthodontist. There's a lot more education. So we're a more buttoned down formal sort of practice. But most importantly, decide what it is you want to say so that those are the sorts of images people will see when they come to your site. Now, as much as we want to have pictures that people want to see, we definitely want to make sure that we don't have the pictures no one wants to see. And I will tell you that personally, I call these juicy pics and you know what they are. My friends here at Legacy Dental are illustrating that for us. In the dental industry, it's not weird to us to see the inside of someone's mouth. But in what I like to call the real world, we never meet anyone with our face retracted like that. No one wants to see the inside of your mouth. And I get you've probably done some beautiful cases, some veneers where they were just flawless. The gum line was perfect. And we want to show that stuff off. In fact, we often put it in our before and after galleries. But even in that place, your average patient showing up on a dental website doesn't want to see juicy pics. We don't want to see the inside of someone else's mouth. Let's face it, any hygienist who are joining me today can tell you that most patients don't want to see the inside of their own mouths. That's why they're not flossing. So let's make sure that we keep those photos, those retracted photos, those juicy pics somewhere in the practice. We may have a before and after journal we use there. We may have examples that we can show on a screen in the practice. But on our website, let's keep it to beautiful, smiling faces, whether that's your team or even your befores and afters. And your before and after galleries, please make those full face or at least full smiles that are unretracted so that people can see themselves in the before and envision themselves in the after. Now, once we get past photos, one of the other huge things, both for Google search and also for establishing who you are as a practice, that you're an authority in your field, is the idea of having a blog on your page. This is something Google considers fresh, relevant content. So again, the sort of thing that gets people to the site to begin with, but it also helps to keep them on your site longer. They're going to spend some time reading whatever you put there. Hopefully, you've got links within that blog that will send people to other pages. For example, you might write a blog piece on Invisalign, and somewhere else on your website, you have a page devoted to Invisalign. So it's a good idea within that blog post to have a link that goes directly to your Invisalign page. This does a bunch of things. The biggest one is it keeps them on your site for a significant amount of time. It also causes them to go to multiple pages. Both of these things are signals to Google that you are a legitimate page, but also that you're a good page because you're providing a good user experience. And that's going to cause them to be more likely to serve your page up in search. But what it's also doing for that prospective patient is establishing you as an authority on the subject, because now you have multiple places on your website that say, hey, we know what we're doing here. We're probably the best place that you can go 
for the treatment that you need. So I just want to share a couple of what I call blogging 101, some things you want to make sure that you do when you blog. And the biggest one is you want it to be 90% original content. So what do I mean by 90% original? What I mean is let's not wholesale lift that article we saw somewhere else, even if it says exactly what we want to say. We want to write our content ourselves. But there's nothing wrong with citing that article. And that's where that 10% comes in. Maybe you quote the article, maybe you make reference to it and always give credit to whoever wrote it. But you can include something that's a good hook like that, that sort of, again, ties you to another authority. You want it to be about 500 to 800 words in length. Now, I know that may seem massively long. I assure you it's not. It's just about a page and a half on your blog, not a lot of scrolling. But that 500 to 800 length is going to help when folks go into Google search. And the thing you want to think about is that most folks these days pick up their phone and say, hey, Alexa, or whoever it is, and that's how they search. They don't type in dentist near me anymore. They ask the question, where is there a dentist near me? So those longer blog posts will give you the ability to answer more of those searchable questions. Again, I want you to link it to related pages on your site. And I want you to have small scannable sections. We are all very short attention span on the internet. Let's face it, the biggest commodity online is attention and everyone is vying for your attention. So if we throw up a seven page, multiple paragraphs, big, long tirade on whatever it is we think about implants, we're not going to get folks who engage with us. But if they look at it and immediately see there's some bulleted lists, there's small chunks of reading, then even on a mobile device, they're going to say, OK, I can spend time with this. I can learn more about what this practice has to offer. So make sure that when you do put content up like this, it's in what we call snackable chunks. This is not the time to rewrite your doctoral thesis. This is information that patients want to have. And preferably, it's about services you want to provide in the practice. And always, always, always equip it with at least one visual image. And visuals are really important because we are all, again, looking for that piece of attention online. Now, if you've never blogged before and you're thinking, yeah, I don't know what to write about. That's, that's not my vibe. I'm not a writer. I don't know what to talk about. The reality is you guys do this every day in the practice. Hygienists educate patients every time they sit in the chair. Doctors talk about the different services that are offered every time they do a treatment plan. So things that are easy to talk about are services you want to promote. Invisalign, implants, maybe you've got a CEREC machine. Talk about the benefits of those, how that makes your practice better than the average practice, how it sets your practice apart. Again, let's get hygiene involved here. Talk about the benefits of oral health, the benefits of flossing. We all have these crazy hashtag holidays. It's National Taco Day. It's National Donut Day. Whatever that day is, is a great way to tie in something that you write about foods that are good for our oral health and our systemic health. And every hygienist's favorite, the link between oral health and heart health. But most importantly, you want to have content that makes folks want to come in because you're saying to them, we understand this. We understand you as a patient. That's why we're sharing this information. And we want to be able to provide that care. Now, I know that the moment this slide came on, no one saw the words or me talking because we all did that thing because we're all seven on the internet. We all looked at the video because something was moving on the screen. And honestly, it is the single most engaging element that you can have on your site. Not having video today is like not having a website 10 years ago. You absolutely need to have these moving, engaging things. And frankly, they are the best way to tell the story of your practice and to help people understand who you are, what you represent, and how you would be the best possible practice for them. So I will tell you there are five that I absolutely want your practice to have. First one, meet the doc. Now, this might be meet the docs if we've got multiple, and I would suggest to you that every doctor have their own meet the video, and that can be on the about page or their bio page of your website. I also want you to have meet the team. It may be shocking to know this docs, but the number two 
page that's clicked on on a dental website isn't meet the doc, it's meet the team. That's after the home page. So having your team there is something that's important to patients. We want to know as we're coming in, how do I feel about these people? Do I like them? We spend a lot of time talking about our education and our experience and our ability to do the most incredible veneers or the most spectacular implant cases. But in the end, what patients want to know is, do I like you? Do you seem like someone I'd want to come in and spend time with? Because really by choosing you as their practice, that's what they're saying. I want to come and spend time with you. So meet the team videos are super important. And these can be small. If you've got a small team, one video that covers everybody. If you've got a really large team, maybe we do a meet the hygiene team, a meet the assisting team, a meet the admin team, and each of those groups gets their own video. But make sure people get to say a little bit about who they are, why they're a part of your practice, maybe how they got into dentistry, and what they love about what they do. Because that gives the patients the message they want to hear, which is the, do I like you? Do I want to spend time with you? It's also a good idea to give them a quick tour of the office. Maybe you've got some amazing technology you want them to see or beautiful operatories, or maybe your office is just a beautiful building from the outside. Capture those things so patients can get that ahead of time view of what they'll experience when they do come to your practice. And patient testimonials, my gosh, there is nothing more compelling than another human saying that you're amazing. If you can get two or three of your patients combined into one video that you put on your site in a patient testimonial video, this will do more for you than having 50 of them on Google. Yes, it's nice to have a written review, and I want you to have those all over the place, and I hope they're all five stars. But honestly, again, as humans, we're compelled by other humans. We want to make that connection. So another patient saying, you're the jam that's more likely to get them to come to your practice. And I'd love something that talks about what makes you different. What tells me your philosophy? What, what is it about your practice that makes you the place I should go? Because again, the whole point of these videos is to connect and have a patient say, yep, that's the place I want to be. So I will tell you that 75% of patients, and this is a poll done by our folks at 1-800-DENTIST, say that having any time access to a practice makes them more likely to stay with that practice. They want to know that if the office is open from 7 to 3, Monday to Thursday, and that happens to be all the time they're at work, that they still have a way that they can get in touch with you. That's super important to them. And I just want to show you a little bit of data here. I don't want to bog you with data, but this is important data because I think what we need to see is what happens if they can't reach us. So in this example, we're looking at a thousand patients land on your website. They did that one thing we really wanted them to do. They came to our website. But statistically, from the time they look on your website to they actually want to pick up the phone, call you and book an appointment, we're dropping down to 80, we're dropping 91% falling off right there because they didn't want to take that action because maybe it was too much work because maybe it was too involved. Maybe they were at work and so they couldn't make a phone call because somebody would come behind them and say, what are you doing on the phone or whatever it is. We want to make sure that we're giving them an easy way to do that because even once they've booked it, another 76% drop off that actually show up at the office. And then for me, the big one, is do we keep them as patients? I know a lot of times we like to count new patient when that patient first walks in the door, but I will tell you that that visit is a blind date. They have not decided to be a patient yet. They've decided to see if you're really the right practice for them. Everything you showed them on the website said yes, but now they need to make sure. It's when the patient comes back that we know we've really got a patient. And as you can see from that original thousand who landed on the site, we've got a less than 2% conversion rate. Less than 20 of them are staying with us. And when we look at the three or so hundred dollars it costs in patient acquisition through marketing and outreach, that's a lot of money we've spent that isn't walking in and ending up in our chair. So what can we do about that? How can we help this process? How can we get people to make the decision based on our content and finally say, yeah, I want to come in? The biggest thing is to make it easy to book with you. 
Now, I talked about you might be open from Monday to Thursday, seven to three. And for the vast majority of humans out in the world, that's probably going to be during work hours. So calling a dental office from the middle of their day, especially if it's that first time call. So now they've got to give you their health history and their insurance information, their social security number and where are my birthmarks and all that information you got to give up front. Suddenly you've got people going, I can't do this from work. So now I, I can't call this office. I've got to find somebody who's open when I'm done with work. Wouldn't it be great, though, if you had a solution where they could really see your schedule, they could book with you right there online, right through something on your website. So now your website has said to them, yeah, this is you got to come to this practice. This is where I want to be. And now they can take action right there, sitting at their desk and actually schedule an appointment with you. I know for me, that would be huge because I'm constantly somewhere and having to pick up a phone and make those decisions and look at my calendar isn't as easy as just being able to click through to something. So the folks who are kind enough to sponsor us here today, and we'll hear a little bit more from Alec later, um, what's phenomenal about their process is the real-time integration into your website. So as you can see there, patient makes that on the phone. It literally looks like the, your practice branding, like they're dealing directly with your practice. And you're going to see that pop up instantly in your schedule. So you also know, because let's face it, you guys are worried about who's in the book, where they're in the book and all that stuff. You'll know immediately, hey, a patient has made this appointment with us. And I know a lot of times when we talk about these online scheduling tools, and I will tell you, I've been in the dental industry for a very long time, longer than I sometimes care to admit. And in the beginning of these sort of early patient scheduling things, there was a lot of fear in practices. And I'm, I'm going to speak openly to that because I know in the early days there was a, well, I don't want a patient to just throw an appointment in wherever they feel like it. They don't understand my block booking that I do or all these other things in your practice. What's phenomenal about now, and we truly are in the golden age of technology for the dental industry, is that now we're in a place where those sorts of things shouldn't be fears anymore. Now, certainly there are some still out there that never change a thing after they came out with their first version, but now we have the ability to actually go in and customize it, to, to create a schedule so that when a patient makes an appointment with us, we know they're making the right kind of appointment in the right kind of time for the schedule that we're building. And let's face it, having control over your schedule, being able to customize all of that is the single most important thing about your schedule. I mean, that's that's the money. That's the revenue. So being able to create all of these different filters and customizations so that a patient can easily make an appointment and still be in the production and the days that you want it to be, to me is a tremendous way to still control your schedule while also giving patients the ability to have control over when they interact with you and when they're able to make appointments. So I hope that we have covered a lot of things here that are helpful and useful for you with your website and your practice. The biggest things I want you to remember here are always include engaging content. When you post something, think to yourself, would I want to hear this? Would I want to learn this? Because that's content that's truly engaging. Show them who you truly are. Again, don't give me that wedding photo. Everybody's in a line. I don't know anybody's personality. Show me your personalities. Show me who you are as people because that's who a patient wants to connect with. And then once they make the decision to connect with you, give them an easy way to do it. I hope, again, that was helpful for all of you. I'm going to welcome back my friend Alec here. Um, so if you folks have any questions, I know there were a few there in the chat. We can certainly toss them over to him or to me. We are both here to answer you. Laura, thank you so much. Um, Truly my pleasure. Tons of tangible, detailed strategies to optimize practice websites. Um, very lucky to have you here. My pleasure. So for those who, anybody who has questions, just drop them into the Q&A, and then Laura and I uh, will do our absolute best to answer those. Laura, I guess a question that I, I had, what, do you, what is the most common miss that you see uh, practices, kind of just the biggest mistake practices are making today uh, with, their, with their website? I think the biggest one is thinking that it's something that you can just make once and walk away from it. 
you know, it, the sort of set it and forget it mentality. Um, you've constantly got to be updating what's there, whether it's adding new functions or adding new content, but you've got to give folks a reason to want to come back to it. Even existing patients, you know, you want to share new information that's there um, and not just have something that's been there forever. I also tell folks at least every three years, update your photography. Um, everyone changes how they look. It'd be nice if we all got younger. We don't, but it'd be nice if when I came in, I met the people who were actually there. You don't want your about you photos to look like a dating profile where they show up at the restaurant and you're 20 years older. Um, be your authentic self in those pictures. Be who you should be and update that content on a regular basis. Thanks. Um, and I guess it's really hard. A lot of dentists and uh, practice teams don't have a ton of time just dealing with all of the day-to-day. -day. Um, mm -hmm. To learn more, um, I guess, where would you recommend dentists who don't have the in-house team to do blogging? Um, how would they learn to go about doing so? Right. Absolutely. So there are many, many marketing agencies out there that do this sort of work. Certainly we do it at Working Cat. We uh, coach and advise teams on how to do that. But very often, if you're paying for some sort of social media package through your website provider or um, through just a, a marketing agency, blogging is frequently part of that. And I know that blogging is the one that kind of scares people because like, oh, it's a novel. It's not a novel. And it's the stuff you talk about every day. And Again, don't feel it has to be formal writing. Write in your natural voice because that tells people who you are and, again, helps make that connection. What are some tools that you recommend to try and reduce the amount of friction in, in just creating content? Yeah, so I think the biggest one is to engage the team. Um, too often, there's one person, and the folks who are joining us today are likely that one person in the practice who has been handed the, here, you do marketing. Um, and it, it can be daunting, especially when that's just sort of a side gig to the full-time job that you have at the practice. The biggest thing you want to do is engage the entire team. So blog is a great example because, you know, maybe we have the hygienist write one, maybe we, the doc writes one, maybe one of your CDAs writes one. And now no one is carrying the whole burden, but then you've also got a lot of widely varied content. I also ask that because, you know, on social media and whatnot, we want to be posting photos or quick little videos have everybody be taking those. Just because you're who runs social media doesn't mean you have to be the one who takes the picture of the VIP patient today or the, the braces removal or whatever the thing is. Bring the team into it. You may be who's posting the content, but that content creation, it'd be nice if the team could help you with it. Also in a content creation world, I am Canva's biggest fan. I, they should probably pay me um, because it just makes creating your content and planning your content ahead of time a world easier than trying to do it spur of the moment. Awesome. And I see our Q&A number is kicking up. I love people yeah. ask questions. <laughs> yeah. So one of the questions that just came in um, is in regards to bots and AI messaging. Um, what are they missing? Or I guess, are they, do you find it to be an effective approach? Yeah. So I, I struggle with some of the stuff that's out there that feels impersonal. Um, and that's the best way I would explain it, because there are a lot of AI abilities to reach out to our patients, to talk to our patients. My biggest thing is I want it to look like it comes from you. Um, one of my pet peeves, and I it's happening on my phone as we're sitting here, you know, you sign up for, say, some stores discount program. And I always know when it's from one of them, because it's not a phone number, it's a short code. And for those of you on the on here not familiar with short code, it's that five numbers that aren't a phone number that you see in your text messages all the time. That immediately says to me without looking at it that it's not somebody I know. That's some, not something I'm invested in. So anytime we use one of these systems that allows us to use AI for outreach, let's make sure that we've taken the time up front to customize it so it looks like our brand and it looks like it's coming from us. That I'm more likely to engage with. Makes sense. Um, so for, I guess, what would the recommendation be there for uh, a practice that's closed? A patient or a potential patient may have questions. Do you mm -hmm. think is the recommendation that AI may not be personal enough? Yeah. And I, I think that, I mean, I think in five years, we may see the AI that can say, hey, I'm having a little discomfort on this extraction we did today. What do I do? And it can answer it. 
Um, I don't think we're there yet for answering the two problems and questions, but I think that there are enough out there that can, you know, like you guys, book an appointment, book a recare appointment. Um, we can tell patients when they're due for recare. We can do all of those sorts of things right now. And I think that there are good tools out there. You guys is a great example who effectively do that and let us customize it enough so that there's never a feeling from the patient's end of, oh, I'm not really dealing with this practice. Thank you. Um, another question from one of the attendees, do payments on the website help at all? Oh my gosh. I love that we now have the ability for payment portals. I really do. I think that's huge. First of all, if you're the person who collects money in the office, I have to assume that is your favorite new feature on the website. Um, asking for money is hard. Um, hunting people down for money is even harder. If they've got the ability at two o'clock in the morning to log in and make that credit card payment, win all around. I'm a huge fan of that. Anything that reduces the friction and again, lets that patient have any time access to you. Very good. Um, that leaves all of our open Q&A questions. Is anybody else still on the uh, the webinar have any last minute questions for myself or Laura? Any three dots, people frantically type fingers. Yeah. Um, we all know the three dots. We'll see. I think nothing yet. Um, well, Laura, thank you so much for all of the incredible insight. Um, we do have another webinar coming up in December on actually getting the appointments that were booked on the website to actually turning them into patients. Um, so hopefully everybody here can make it. We'll send out emails to encourage everybody to join and to continue learning about how to better market and actually get patients to the practice. Um, want to say thank you on behalf of everybody at Next Health. Laura, thank you. Everybody else, thank you for spending time with us today. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys again in December. Thank you for having me, Alec. I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, everyone. Bye.